Hello and welcome to Living in Maple Valley. I'm Tally Pierre. Today we're going to discuss the upcoming Tahoma School District levy vote. And I have with me today two tireless volunteers. I have Griffin Casey with uh, Casey Grove Law Offices here in Maple Valley and Chrissy Riggs who's the beloved kindergarten teacher at Rock Creek where my kids went to school. Uh, they both work very hard in the community and the schools. So thank you both for joining me today to talk about this important thank issue. You. Thank course. you for being here. Yeah. So I think a lot of people feel that now the state is fully funding education. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like you guys to talk about what programs the state isn't funding and so why the programs and operations levy is so important to our schools. Great, absolutely. So following McCleary, there was a lot of confusion because the intent of the ruling was that the state fully fund basic education. And it's the basic education that the state does fund. Whether or not we're gonna debate if it's fully funded, mm -hmm. that's, that's another day. But what the levies do, the EPO and the tech, they fund whatever's beyond basic. And we know that in our community, our community members, the folks that move here, that come to Maple Valley for the schools, their expectation is that their education experience is going to be beyond basic. Absolutely. So the education programs and operations levy, it funds all the supplemental stuff. So a couple examples, things that are funded primarily by the EPO are athletics, academic coaches, field trips, summer school, extended, um, Programs in the morning, zero hour is in part funded. Facility use, zero hour classes. Then a couple other things, and Chrissy can really expand on this, is uh, that there are items supplemented by the EPO. And so paraeducators, counselors, mm -hmm. math and rap. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of those programs? Yes, we're lucky enough if a child is having some difficulties in math or reading that they can get that small group instruction that they need. And some of that funding does come from the state, but not all of it. Okay. So it doesn't reach enough of those kids that are, just need a little bit more. Right. Uh, additionally, the state believes that we need a pretty small amount of nurses in our school. Oh. So in our school, we would have maybe 0.3 of a nurse, oh. which doesn't really cover when students need medication, right. when students get hurt, right. if we have questions, things like that. Right, and I've had clients move to the Thomas School District just because of the nurses. So I know it's important. We do, we, that's one thing that a lot of folks forget is even if their child doesn't require those medical services, we have a lot of medically fragile kids in our schools and, right. and they want to be able to have a safe school day too. Right, right. I know that the state doesn't really fund a lot of technology or hardly any technology for the schools. So what does the tech levy mean for our district? The tech levy means a couple things. One, we've been without a tech levy since we failed it in February of 2018, and the school board chose not to rerun it with the EPO in April. So we've been operating for two years without the tech levy funds in place. Mm -hmm. So we have been working to just do the bare minimum to keep okay. us together and, and functioning. Um, what it would mean for us to get it in place is that we'd actually be able to see our tech plan get into action and the right. investments being made. Something I think that's really important for folks to understand about the tech plan is this isn't about putting a one-to-one -one system in place. We're not looking to put a Chromebook in every single backpack in the district. This is really about equity and it's making sure that all of our teachers in the classrooms have the training so that no matter what classroom a child is in, they have an equity of experience uh -huh. with the interface of technology and how technology right. is used in the classroom. This is really important too as our kids go from the elementary schools into two middle schools have they all had similar experiences uh -huh. as they're feeding into this consolidated education experience? What about for you? Right, I was gonna say that too. We, we as teachers are finding our technology is aging very quickly. Mm -hmm. So the experiences that we can give to kids, which is to utilize technology to boost how they're learning in kindergarten and then put technology in their hands. Are they coding? Are they doing these, these great activities in STEAM and STEM to learn how to be competitive as they get older. Yeah. Right. And, and one of the pieces that I think um, we don't think about when we're not in the classroom watching how it's used is the loss of instruction time when equipment fails. Right, right now, over 40% of our computers are over five years old. And anybody that's familiar with the refresh yeah. cycles of technology, that's a, a significant portion right. of computers that are needing to be refreshed. And so what that means in Chrissy's life is that when the computers are in the classroom, there's lost instruction time because the teacher's needing to deal with computers that are right. doing the flashing blue screen or something and for teachers when tech fails not only does it mean lost instruction time but it also creates classroom management concerns because yeah. kiddos are bored and when you get yeah. distracted you're chatting yeah. and you're not learning right so there's also um, 
built into the curriculum that we get now is the assumption that we are going to have the technology piece of it. Uh, yeah. There are, there are, with, built in that, there are things you click, there are things you print, right. there are, there's interactive. So you can't yeah. even teach to the curriculum right. if you don't have the technology. Fully, yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So I know as a real estate agent that there's a very direct correlation between passing levies and the real estate market and how yep. strong the real estate market is. So besides the schools, where in our community do you see these levies have a real impact? Well, one thing that we don't talk about too often is that the Tahoma School District is the number one employer in our community. Uh -huh. And we are incredibly fortunate to have teachers who live, work, and play here, which to me, that really strengthens our community. It okay. is powerful for our children to have their teachers living here, engaged in the community, uh -huh. going to the shows, and sports also have children in the district themselves. So there's the employment uh -huh. element. There's a trickle-down impact there of, you know, if, if we're not employing a larger pool, those folks can't then go to, to Johnson's mm -hmm. and to Java Java and spend their dollars there, which are also local small business right. owners. Right. So there's that piece of it. The other piece is that levies fund some of those supplemental items we talked about before, the athletics, the opportunities for activities like drama and we the people or robotics. And there's definitely an element of if our children aren't actively engaged in these developmental activities, what are they doing? Right. What are they finding time to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, that's a concern, very much so. Okay. Well, and I, I remember when I student taught a couple of years ago, <laughs> uh, there was one teacher that said, I don't live in the community where I teach. I don't want to take a sick day and go get medicine and have somebody see me. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah. I was student teaching somewhere else, and for my first five, five years of teaching, I did not live in the community where I taught. I went to school, I came home. Now I live in the community where I teach. It takes me two hours to go to Fred Meyer because I have to have all my former <laughs> students, but I'm okay with it. I love yeah. seeing my kids. I love watching them grow. I oh, love yeah. seeing them at my own kids' events. I love to watch them blossom. I, I'm all in. And I, th I think for me, I'm a K through 12 alumni at the district, and my daughter now goes to a school that I was one of the first students to attend Aww. when it opened in 92. And I think that's something that despite Maple Valley's big boom in population and our mm -hmm. growth, which is exciting, it's kept us feeling like a small town. Right. We, we don't feel anonymous because you have that continuity in this knit together community where there's just many layers where we all see each other and we all know each other. And, mm -hmm. and that also, what I like about it is it creates an element of accountability for our kids mm -hmm. because when our children are out in the community and yeah. they see people they know, yeah. it, to me it creates a sense of safety and security. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree, I agree. So we're getting close to vote day. Yep. It's Tuesday the 11th, so if anybody is undecided and wants more information, where should they go? Absolutely, great question. So www.tahomasd.us, that's the school district website. You can go there and there's an entire levy landing page. There's a tab you can click on at the top that says levy and it will take you to all the information. And then if you search around online, Instagram or Facebook, you can use hashtag we are Tahoma and you can identify some different posts from the vote committee and videos that can explain additional information. Another thing too is reach out to folks that you know are part of the effort that you see wearing the we are Tahoma t-shirts. Volunteers for the vote committee are more than excited to mm -hmm. talk about it and to answer those questions because sometimes there's questions that go beyond what you can see right. on the website. And so we welcome those questions, that interaction. And similarly, I know that our school board members as well would be happy to answer any kind of questions. Perfect. Very yeah. good. Thank you guys so much for this Absolutely. discussion today. Of course. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm Tally Pierre. I'm with Park Bench Maple Valley and also John L. Scott Real Estate Broker. See you next time. Bye.